Welcome to my new video lesson. This time, I will be discussing addition of vectors. I will be your teacher. I am Mr. Mark Anthony B. Laroya. Before I begin, let us talk first about the directions of vectors. So we have four major directions. The north, east, west, and south. Along the y-axis, we have two different directions. The one that goes upward is the north direction, and going downward is the south direction. Along the x-axis, going to the right direction, we have the east, and on the left side, towards the negative x-axis, is the west. Let's now talk about vectors. Let's say we have this point, which will serve as the tail of our vector. And then we add a ray with an arrowhead at the end. This will be, let's say, our vector A with a particular length or magnitude. And then another vector, let's say vector B, this time it goes towards the south direction. And as you notice, vector B is longer in terms of length compared to vector A. That means, in terms of magnitude, B has a greater magnitude compared to vector A. And then let's say we have two vectors with a common initial point, vectors A and C. Vector A is going towards the north direction while C is going towards the west direction. If, we if you can observe, A is longer compared to vector C. That means in terms of magnitude, the magnitude of vector A is greater than the value of the magnitude of vector C. And then we have another one, a vector that is going towards the east direction with a particular length or magnitude. And then on its arrowhead, it will be the starting point of a new vector, let's say vector B, that goes towards the south direction. So we have a continuous vector. So from A added by another vector B that changes from going towards the east and then towards the south direction. Let us now talk about equality of vectors. When we say equal vectors, let's say we have a vector or grid rather, and then we have a vector A which has a particular length that represents its magnitude towards the east direction. And then we have another vector which has the same length or magnitude and same direction towards the east direction. If the two vectors are equal in length or magnitude and direction, we can say that the two vectors are equal. So therefore, vector A is equal to. Now when it comes to negative of vectors, let's say we have again vector A, the particular length or magnitude and then we will we'll go we're going to have another vector with the same length but opposite in direction so when two vectors have equal in length or magnitude but opposite in direction therefore the negative of vector a is negative a now let us now do the addition of vectors graphically or should we say manually. So in this lesson, I'll just be discussing the addition of vectors using parallelogram method. So what is a parallelogram method? This method uses the figure of a parallelogram to find the sum of two vectors that have a common initial point. So let's say we have vector A with an initial point and arrowhead. So this is our vector A. And then at the same initial point, we have a vector B, which is towards the east direction with longer length, or should we say the magnitude of vector B is greater than of vector A. Then we're going to form a parallelogram, and that is by adding two more uh, sides, should we say sides, which, get, which will be parallel to both vectors A and B. So let's say we form a broken line, like a, like, uh, almost look like the vector A, 
with the same direction and same in terms of length. So, as you see, they are parallel. And then at the end of vector A, or at the arrowhead of vector A, you add again a line, a broken line, which is the same as the length of vector B and same direction towards the east direction. And so we form now a what we call parallelogram. Then coming from the common initial point of vectors A and B, we're going to draw a line or a ray up to the intersection of the two lines that we created. So, we have now this line. This is now what we call the sum of vectors A and B, or this is what we call as our resultant vector. All we have to do is to measure the length of our vector using a ruler or any or something that could identify the length of our vector that will serve as the magnitude of the vector. And addition to that, we must know or identify the direction of this vector. So we put a horizontal line that will intersect with the initial point of our resultant vector and their intersection will serve as a vertex. So they will create an acute angle. And this acute angle is what we call a reference angle. The angle, acute angle formed by our resultant vector and the x-axis. And this will give us our direction, like for example, 35 degrees north of east. Let's say the magnitude of our resultant vector, for example, is 120 newton. Therefore, the right way of uh, giving our resultant vector a value that is 120 newton, 35 degrees north of east. Since this is a vector, a vector quantity, we must have the magnitude and the direction of our vector. Now, let's try this one. Get the resultant vector of A and B. So take note that the length should always be the same for A as well as for B. And uh, they should not change in direction. So we have A and then let's connect with the B at the same common initial point. So we have now the two vectors connected with a common initial point and then let's draw two more lines that will create two parallel two pairs of parallel lines so this line will be parallel to vector b and the other one will be parallel to vector a and now from the common initial point we draw a ray up to the intersection of the two lines that we added and this will be our a plus b or our resultant vector and creating an imaginary x-axis we can identify the direction of our resultant vector so thank you very much for listening and watching hope you learned something new from this video thank you